Hey guys, how you doing? It's Biggs. Welcome back. Today we're going to have a discussion about a topic that has tons of wrong information. There's a lot of finger pointing and there's very, very little actual true factual proof. However, it's very much a problem and I think we should all be made well aware of it. Now you may not know, but there's actually an alien invasion currently going on in the Atlantic Ocean on the eastern coast of the United States, the Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, and the Caribbean. And it's been going on, not recently, this has been going on as early as 1985. Now, it may not be very, very, very well known. It may not be what you're thinking initially, because this alien is actually a fish species. That's right, I told you it's fish. And this fish species that clearly does not belong there, and it's causing all sorts of problems. So let's get into it. So you probably say, Biggs, what earth are you talking about? Fish move around all the time in the ocean, right? They use the ocean currents and they move around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. I agree. However, this fish was never here until the mid 80s. And it definitely couldn't have arrived here following the ocean currents because it has certain temperature requirements. The fish in question is this guy, the lionfish. A common species in the aquarium trade, a regular sight at public aquariums, all around the world. Now, members of this family, I believe it's, I don't even, I'm going to butcher the name, Teroi, P-T-E-R-O-I-S. All right. Uh, these are all members of the family Scorpionoidae. Now that sounds like scorpion, doesn't it? And it should for a reason. These also include the scorpion fishes, bam, and the rock fishes. These are all highly venomous fish covered with all sorts of dangerous spines that cause all sorts of problems. And they're all crazy gregarious predators. There's actually two species that have somehow found themselves in established in these waters. I'm not going to try and say the general name again. Volatans, which everybody knows, is the volatan lionfish. It's nice and big. Everybody's seen that one. Often the more commonly seen lionfish. And the other one is, remember that generic name, Miles, M-I-L-E-S. And that one's often called the red devil firefish. Ooh, sounds lovely. <laughs> now the later is uh, nowhere near as established as the, as the volatans, but it has been found in the Caribbean. Now, the native range for the volatans is actually the Pacific Ocean, primarily around the north and eastern sides of Australia and all the Australasian islands up towards Japan. Whereas the Miles lionfish is actually more native to the Indian Ocean and goes all the way down the eastern side of Africa, encompassing Madagascar. Far, far away from where these alien invaders are being found today. This invasion has been traced back to the first sightings found in southern Florida around 1985 and as you can see by the video the invasion is continuing and it's continuing aggressively now this alien invader had absolutely no problem in establishing itself quickly and for a very number of reasons number one it truly doesn't have any natural predators whatsoever in these foreign waters number two is that it's extremely adaptable in many, many environments. It, it lives on reefs, it lives in open water. Because it has no predators, it can capitalize on all sorts of environments. And three, it's aggressive and an extremely efficient predator of many prey sources. It doesn't eat just fish, it takes down shrimps, all sorts of stuff. This is a very, very, as mentioned earlier, gregarious predator. The topic of how these things came to be here is riddled with all sorts of speculation and very, very little true fact or data to back any of it up directly. Most reports will point a finger directly at the aquarium trade, stating that a few, possibly a few irresponsible hobbyists, you know, we all are irresponsible hobbyists, that's what we do, we all just go and take our fish and we just dump them into the water, that's what everybody does, right? No, very, very few do that. But they're basically suggesting that a few irresponsible hobbyists must have ditched their unwanted pets why is this the common thread? Well, it's simply because it's the easiest target and it's very, very impossible to prove it as a negative. So it must be true, right? Who knows, right? So let's discuss the theories as to the origin of this invasion. 
Now, other theories that have been brought up but are often not very well discussed. There was a very, very large display tank of volatile lionfish with several specimens installed in the seawall of in Biscayne Bay, Florida. Sounds like a great idea. This just sounds like Florida well thought out plan, right? And however, in 1992, that seawall was completely obliterated and destroyed by Hurricane Andrew. So those lionfish are no longer in the seawall. I wonder where they went. <laughs> There's been a lot of references in literature saying that they were probably introduced in large numbers during Hurricane Andrew, not just from that source, but others. But there's been absolutely zero data to back any of that up. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Committee, uh, or sorry, Conservation Commission, prepared a document years ago as a hypothesis. And it was a well-researched, and it was basically to disprove a lot of the theories that were floating around. In this document, they proposed that even if a box truck full of volatile lionfish fell off the intercoastal waterway near the southeast Florida and fell into the ocean, there's probably not enough propagol pressure to create an invasion such as this. And the true answer of that document was no. Those fish would have actually had to be a male and female, mature, would have actually been placed directly on a reef to be able to have any sort of success. In discussion with a notable authority of the global aquarium trade, especially in North America, and even more so directly Florida, the lovely Miss Sandy Moore, the president of Seagrest Farms, Inc., she told me that even in the heyday, in the 80s and 90s, when everybody was keeping those uh, Fowler-style tanks with just fish, uh, with live rock, but not all the oogies and the schmag and not all the corals and stuff, but just those tanks, that was the absolute heyday for keeping this type of fish. And we're talking, when this was in the prime, Seagrist alone, whose distribution network wasn't necessarily global at the time, but it definitely handled all of southeastern uh, East U.S., uh, they would maybe deal in maybe 10 plus volatile lionfish per week. Never would they ever, ever have the need for truckloads. So it's been proven, there's another theory, it's been proven that many marine species have been transported great distances in ocean freight liner ballast tanks. So tank, these big giant ocean liners take in a lot of volume of water to balance the ship when they're carrying their freight before they go transcontinental. Okay? Uh, and although it's highly improbable, it is actually possible that either lionfish eggs or larvae could very well have been taken in with the ballast water over in their home waters and survived the lengthy transoceanic voyage and then released into the Atlantic waters to have grown into adult fish capable of reproducing. Highly unlikely, but it is possible. Another very viable, but also often completely forgotten about theory, is that there's an Atlantis resort in the Bahamas. It's a pretty well-known resort. When this thing was built, and this was only a few years right after the initial sightings when this thing was built, I believe it opened in 1990 or 92 or something like that. It was right in that time frame, right around Andrew when it actually opened. But construction took several years. And during that time when, it was, when they built it, they actually had an extremely large display aquarium that contained a large group of volatile lionfish. And probably the other Miles lionfish might have been there as well, and that's how it got introduced and possibly into the Caribbean. So, but this large tank has proven, and they've, uh, it's been well documented, it's been proven that they were not scrubbing the backwash water when they did maintenance on this aquarium for the first few years of its existence. So it's very, very probable then that the eggs or larvae of this giant display aquarium were flushed out into the ocean. Hmm, plausible? Pretty sure, right? Lots of options here, but let's keep blaming the aquarium people. It's always them, bad, bad aquarium people. In another uh, Florida WDC uh, document, it was also stated that for the invasion to have commenced, an actual mature male and a mature female would have had to have been placed out on the reef for a true event to have logically occurred. Now that's backed up by the government. So that means that makes a lot of sense, right? Okay. So also, through repeated DNA testing of multiple specimens, it has been very well documented that the invasion can actually be traced back to an extremely small genetic pool, possibly even a actual single pair. Imagine that, a single pair, two fish created this one giant thing. So the likelihood of, you know, Joe up in somewhere in Florida up here releasing his one pet fish into the ocean and then some guy 
7,500 miles away going and releasing his somewhere else, the likelihood of those two individual fish ever finding each other is extremely, in the multitude of the billions, extremely remote, right? Un almost implausible. So some of these other ideas actually hold weight, right? Starting to look better now? There is one more option. And in my opinion, now, as well as that of others, others held in extremely high regard in the field agree upon. Now, albeit, it must be noted that never once has this ever been mentioned in any form as an option or even a plausible cause simply because the aquarium industry is such an easy target. Regardless, this is a very well thought out model that can easily explain the introduction as well as the distribution model, or at the very least, of least the volatens lionfish. Now think about it. Here's the idea. Think about the possibility of one individual, because remember, it was only the DNA has proved, brought it down through multiple testing of samples taken all over this collection area, that the DNA shows that it's probably come from an extremely small genetic pool, the possibility of only one pair of fish. Two fish, one pair. So think about this, the possibility of one individual, maybe an individual that owned a dive company, a small dive company, and he wanted to provide something a little bit different than maybe his other customers could. So maybe this individual took a pair of volatile lionfish and took them out onto a small reef, his area where he took his dive people, and released them there. Obviously the waters are perfect, they're plentiful, there's lots of food sources, the temperature's right, if it's a mature pair, the mature pair could readily breed there, and all of a sudden they became very well established. All of a sudden he's provided all sorts of visual interest for his clients, without any regard or thought that this could become a global thing. Most may not know, but most of Florida's true endemic or native species aren't that sexy, especially the marine stuff. There's a lot of gray, a lot of green, a lot of brown, some may have little highlights of yellow and little flashes and stuff like that, but they're not, we're not talking Dorian Nemo here. This is not what you find in the Florida reefs. They're not all that sexy. So this actually does us something very, very plausible, right? Very extremely plausible model for this alien invasion. But regardless, they're here to stay now. So there's all sorts of companies, organizations, social media pages dedicated to controlling the spread controlling the population of these alien invaders. The encouragement to catch and now consume lionfish is now an extremely fast and growing and welcoming trend. They've even got cookbooks on it. <laughs> no matter what, we as aquarists, we need to take responsibility. We need to do our part and to ensure that no matter what we do, we are never responsible for releasing non-native species into local waterways. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, take care.